Athens International Radio, 104.4 FM, the station that speaks your language. Athens for real. Join Alexia Andrazi for the next half hour and get real. Live studio interviews, insight on the city's cultural life and tips on what to see and do. With you every Monday, Wednesday and Friday from 10.30 till 11am on air 104.4 FM. Good morning and welcome to Athens for Real. Kali of the Mother to you. Today is Megali of the Mother, a very important week for the Greek Orthodox uh, faith uh, leading up to Easter on Saturday and uh, Easter Sunday. Um, I'm Alexia Ambrosi. I'm here in the studio today with Ernst van Dam. Good morning to you. Good morning, Alexia. Who is going to be cycling all the way to South Africa. So he'll be telling us about this uh, extraordinary route and uh, of course the drive behind it in just a moment I'm not surprised, not everything lasts I've broken my heart so many times I stopped keeping track Talk myself in, I talk myself out I get all worked up, then I let myself down I tried so very hard not to lose it I came up with a million excuses I thought I thought of every possibility I know someday that it'll all turn out You'll make me work so we can work to work it out And I promise you, kid, that I'll get so much more than I get I just haven't met you yet I might have to wait, I'll never give up I guess it's half time and, and the other half's luck Wherever you are, whenever it's right You'll come out of nowhere and into my life And I know that we can be so amazing And baby, your love is gonna change me And now I can see every possibility mm. Somehow I know that it'll all turn out You'll make me work so we can work to work it out And I promise you can't So some people can't even be bothered to walk down the street to their local store to to buy, uh, I don't know, crisps or something. Uh, So they drive there. Uh, But Ernst has uh, walked uh, actually from uh, Holland, where he's from, to Tibet uh, just a few years ago. And now he's going to cycle from Turkey to South Africa. Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, tell me, let's start with your, with your first trip. Uh, what was the, the, the direction for it? Why did you decide to do this uh, extraordinary journey? Yes. Um, first, of, first of all, I never walked before in my whole life. <laughs> so, I, so I was 48. I never had training or whatever. And I, I said to myself, well, I start walking and I would walk to Tibet and let's <laughs> see what happens. And my friend was telling me, uh, but you don't have to train. You don't have to practice. You don't. No, why? Because the first day I'm going to walk, that's my training. So the <laughs> thing was that um, I was in a period of my life that um, everything went wrong. And I was not happy. I had a v- very nice job. I was a manager. I had a big car and a nice house. And uh, I was a uh, quality and service manager. And uh, um, th- the thing was, I was not happy with the job because uh, they were not listening to me. And I like people when they listen to me because well, I was an advisor. You're in the right place. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the thing was, uh, my relationship went wrong. My, the, the business went down. And then I said to myself, I was 48, and I said to myself, what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. And I was always very connected with social issues in my country. 
No, it's not me. <laughs> um, I was always connected with social issues in my country. I was a labor union member. I was in politics. And I always had the drive to make the world uh, very a idealistic, place. a better mm-hmm. place. And I said to myself, okay, I have to change my life. I have to make a big difference in my life. So I said to myself, I have to do something that, where I know my talent is. And one of my talents was social issues. I studied politics and I've learned from my study that politics sucks. <laughs> so what do you mean that, politics that, sucks? It's a, it's a dirty, crazy, opportunistic uh, lifestyle politics and you ha- when you realize that then you have to find other issues to to make people aware that they can live in a different way and i chose for myself i have to make a change in my life i have to do something different and at that time uh, the the olympic games in china in peking were uh, of beijing we say uh, were uh, starting and in the beginning of march 2008 the tibetan people were uprising to get some more attention for their independence. And many Tibetan people were killed in that that process by the Chinese. So that was a big issue. And one of my specialities in my study was international law and human rights law and uh, economical and social rights of humans in the world. And I said to myself, okay, that's a good cause. And how do you get attention? Then you have to do something. You can take the plane, go to Tibet and come back and then you say, oh, it is so bad in Tibet. No, you have to make an effort. And I said, okay, then I'm going to walk. So I sold my house, I sold my car, I sold every possession that I had, so I had the money to finance my trip. That must Uh, have been quite daunting in a way. I mean, liberating on the one hand, but quite terrifying on another. Yes, yes, it was. But I've learned after many trial and error in my own life that uh, life is about three things. First of all, find your talent. Second of all, follow your heart. And the most important, the third of all, is losing your fears. Why you should be afraid of things that maybe are not going to happen with you. That's crazy. Or maybe are. <laughs> That's crazy. So the thing is, um, I developed myself as a person who said, I'm fearless. I do what I want to do. And to use a very bad word. No, I'm not going to use that word. It is early I, in the morning. I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't care anymore what other people think of me. That was the most important decision in my life. I follow my heart. I'm going to use my talent. I'm going to follow the path that is written for me personally in this life. So I dedicated the rest of my life of improving human rights in the world. And then people say, ah, you are a Don Quixote. (laughs) Yes. And then I say, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> because somebody has to do it. Yes, If every, everybody sits back watching the m- many soap operas are, who are on television and only complaining, then we're never going to change the world. So, okay. Sounds like me at some points in my life. <laughs> no, but th- the, thing is, the thing is, when, 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 you know, a lot of, uh, what I see in a lot of countries in the world, that people become a kind of apathic against their government, against their politics. And okay, it's okay because they are a lot of people in the world are disappointed in their representatives. But if you go if that ap- apathy becomes fatalism, then it's wrong. Yeah. Yes. Because if you become fatalistic, because a lot of people told me when I was start, start walking and when I say to my friends I start walking, yes, but you are just one person. And, and do you think you're going to change the world? And then I always told them, what if Gandhi thought that? 